Well, good morning. We continue in our Jesus uh, uh, resolution. Resolution. Revolution. Revolution. <laughs> Jesus revolution. I'll get it right here. Uh, series this morning, and uh, this morning we're looking at doing a new thing. And the scripture we have from the Gospel of Luke is the scripture where um, people are bringing uh, the little children to Jesus and the disciples uh, try to intervene and, and keep the people away and Jesus re rebukes them and says, um, you know, let the children come. And then he ends up by saying that unless you come like these little children, uh, that you'll not enter the kingdom of heaven. The uh, scene here, uh, the, the setting, Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. He has been preparing his disciples um, for what's going to happen when they get to Jerusalem. The disciples can see a change in, in Jesus' demeanor, uh, that there's a tension there as they journey uh, towards Jerusalem. And having these uh, uh, children uh, they see that as a distraction. Uh, they know Jesus wouldn't would not turn them away, uh, so they're trying to intervene and bring some uh, tranquility into this journey to Jerusalem. There. Uh, now, what's happening here is different uh, from the pictures that you see. Uh, the, the the pictures depicting this uh, show um, an an elementary school age child uh, being gathered to Jesus uh, as he's uh, talking to the disciples there. The word that's used for, for child uh, in the Greek translates as infant. So it was mothers, and, and this was a tradition uh, within the Jewish culture for uh, parents to bring their infants to a, uh, a rabbi that they um, happened to, to like their teaching or was respected and to bring the infants to the rabbi to receive a blessing um, for their infant. Um, the custom of christening, uh, of dedicating children within the church, I think uh, has its roots in that. So it's infants that are being brought to Jesus that uh, the disciples are trying to intervene to. Um, and William Barclay points out uh, four items here um, that these infants, uh, these small children come uh, to Jesus that Jesus is saying that we as adults need to adopt. Uh, and the first is a sense, a sense of wonder uh, and, and awe. One of the things as a pastor that never ceased to amaze me is the look of wonder and awe that would come onto an infant's face when I was baptizing them. When I touched their head with the water, there was this all of a sudden, what's going on here? And it's just all is the only word that I can describe uh, what that was to me. Um, there's trust. The, the infant um, has no other way of support other than to trust the adult that's caring for them. Uh, Barclay says that their child is naturally obedient. As they grow older, that obedience um, uh, sometimes turns to rebellion. But when you think of an infant, um, the, the, the infant's going to be driven by cause and effect. And when the infant discovers this type of activity, gives this type of response, then, then that's, they're going to be obedient in that way. And Barclay says that, uh, that, that the child has an amazing faculty for forgiveness. Uh, in other words, not holding a grudge that things uh, pass on and, and are forgotten and, and put, put aside. Uh, two statements that I found that, uh, well, Barclay's summary of this, um, in this idea of, um, 
us be adults becoming children uh, is to keep alive the sense of wonder to live in unquestioning trust instinct instinctively to obey to forgive and forget that is the childlike spirit that is the passport to the kingdom of god um, one of the things i found on law uh, on the internet uh, sort of says the same thing with different words that it is approaching god with the humility and sincerity with expectation and excitement it is a realization that we are not sufficient in and of ourselves but are dependent um, on another um, there is uh, we talk about this series the jesus revolution that there are things that jesus is turning uh, upside down and the traditional thought and practice of the day is that children uh, had no standing. They, the women were uh, uh, almost treated as, well, they were treated as property. Children were below that. Uh, they weren't even considered as property sometimes, especially a, a female child. Uh, so it, the idea is that um, it would take an adult to be able to be worthy and to uh, uh, be able to enter into God's kingdom. Um, and Jesus is turning that 180 degrees and he's saying, you got that all wrong. That you as an adult and your adult ways and your stubbornness uh, and your hard headedness, um, your unforgiveness, um, your disobedience, that until you put all of that aside and go back to that infant in the mother's arms and, and responding in that way, then there's no way for you to get into the kingdom of God. Um, that was uh, groundbreaking thought. I mean, it was true, completely opposite of anything the Pharisees and, and the scribes were teaching and I dare say that they were appalled at that and there was a lot of gnashing of teeth as, as they considered uh, what Jesus had done there you have any thoughts about this childlike uh, faith well to me it's like Jesus interpretation instead of a Jesus revolution because revolution sparks the idea of physical contact and um, inner fighting. Interpretation was, to me, it's like if you believed as an infant, if you, an adult, you would still come to Jesus and want to seek the information and more knowledge. You're childlike in that thinking that you're questioning it just like a child would. Why is there air? Why does butterflies stay in the air when they flutter their wings? With that uh, seeking of knowledge, your infant, infant, uh, not infantile, but infant in thinking, and if you're seeking thing about more about uh, Jesus's uh, teachings, is the way he interpreted the Old Testament. He brought new meaning to what they already knew as the basis of their religion, only he was bringing it one-on-one -on -one rather than as a group through a rabbi or through the synagogue. But you said what they already knew. Um, and, and what they already knew was what the rabbis told them that they were supposed to know. Right, because they couldn't read, right? They uh, had the rabbis read the scripture, had the Torah, and they had to take the rabbi's word for it. And they had to take the uh, scribe's word that they translated it and rewrote it the same way that it was written in the one they were copying. Yeah. They did they mistake and change one or two letters in a word and made a whole new demeaning, which sometimes probably happened. Yeah. Uh, the, the point that I was getting at there is that um, it, it was not that Jesus was rewriting what God had intended. 
He was just uh, simply uh, opening people's eyes to, to see and to understand uh, the heart of God and, and the uh, will of God. Um, and I think that that's very much at work in our world today and that uh, we've somewhat become um, as an organized religion we've become set in our ways that this is the way things are and not completely open to understanding or hearing something from a different perspective uh, something different uh, than what we've always been taught and contemplating that and a child that's going to consider everything um, one of the statistics that um, has always amazed me but then it, when you look inside of it it's not so amazing is that um, the most creative uh, part of a, of a person's life is from birth to about six years old and from six years old onward creativity peaks and starts to decline and that's because up until six years old there's little structure and at six years old we start to bring a lot of structure in organized education and rules, in the, <laughs> rules. Mm -hmm. yeah well we'll see where pastor dawn is going with this i hope that you're beginning to see that in this jesus revolution series that um, jesus teaching were revolutionary mm -hmm. and that um, if we're open to it that he continues to be the same revolutionary today that he was in his own time so i hope that you'll join us uh, in our worship later on this morning as pastor dawn looks at this passage may god's blessings be upon you <laughs> 